Okay, hello Iris, how are you doing? Hi. Hi. I'm very good. How are you doing? Good, good. Uh, welcome to Open Space, a platform for creative young talent. Iris, um, for everyone here on Open Space, can you just give us a little intro on who you are and the very um, unique art form that you do? Please, can you just give us a little rundown? Yeah, so my name is Iris Scott. Uh, I'm a finger painting artist. I work in oils. I'm 36 years old. I live in uh, the high desert of New Mexico, and uh, I'm pretty obsessed with animals, you might say. So um, I'm also a vegan, and um, I love this beautiful planet we live on, and that's all I want to paint. I, w I wanted to actually ask you about animals because I noticed on your art, there's a dog, a bear, fish. Um, it seems like animals are a, a good running theme with your art. Yes, I'm, I'm really, um, I'm not a religious person, but uh, if I were a religious person, I would basically be just an ob observer of nature. So nature is really my temple. Um, here in New Mexico, I live in a very remote place now. Um, there's wild animals everywhere. And um, what really interests me is sort of the sentience of animals. And so um, the reason I paint dogs so often is that that's a much more easy um, door into wildlife. Usually that's our first super duper connection with the sentience of an animal. And uh, my goal as an artist, um, for generations or for decades to come is for um, humans to make that connection with all animals and, and to see that um, the chicken is as precious as the dog and that the pig and the, the giraffe, they're all these just precious, precious beings. That's beautiful. Um, my cat is sitting right underneath my computer now, so maybe she sensed oh, that you like animals. Oh, good. Yeah, I don't know her. <laughs> I'm surprised she hasn't walked over. She usually knows where the camera is all the time. <laughs> they do that. Your art, can you take us through the process, what it takes to make one of your paintings? Yeah, so my paintings are, um, they range in size from quite small to medium size, like this big one behind me, to even much larger. Um, a little painting is usually uh, executed in maybe a day, right? That's a little, I, I go at it. Um, a bigger painting takes um, a little bit more uh, planning because I don't want to, I don't, really can't mess up too badly. That it's, it's very expensive to mess up and have to fix a lot of errors and go backwards and scrape off paint. So um, when it comes to a large work like the one behind me, I'll generally spend a couple days um, using uh, Photoshop to digitally collage everything together. And then once I have a composition I really love, then I start working from that digital sketch. Come here, Foxy. There's my cats right there. <laughs> and um, so I start with the computer and then I and then I end with going into my studio. My little studio cat is always around my feet. I listen to music. I dance if I have to kind of get in the mood. And um, I'm always a little nervous before the painting starts because it's a, I've bitten it off, I've bitten off a lot with a bigger piece and it's, I want to make sure I can chew at that piece. So um, it's a little tense in the beginning. Uh, the first strokes are always quite awkward. Um, and I know there's going to be periods of a painting that are just drudgery. You know, honestly, like I am a professional finger painting artist, right? It sounds like fa la 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 la. <laughs> but um, I would say half of the painting is actually really hard. And, and um, half of the painting is like me trying to talk myself out of it. Um, even having very negative thoughts like this is ugly. You're not a good painter. And then there's this other voice that's like, enough of that you know you're you're incredible you're a genius actually shut that girl up and and it's sort of this back and forth this battle and um luckily the good one always wins um she really always wins she always tells me it's just a matter of time before you finish this and love it and then usually in the uh, you know I'm, I'm painting i'm painting and and the painting's starting to come together. We're almost done with the painting. And then it's pretty blissful as it all kind of comes together. And I get to have this wonderful sense of, wow, I did that. I actually did that. I don't, I, I can't kind of believe I did that. 
And it's this wonder and this gratitude uh, for being alive and being able to be a professional artist um, and, and use my whole brain um, day after day to, to, to do that. So um, finger painting is very therapeutic too, can oh, be. That was so beautiful what you said. Um, and I find it a, a common theme with artists. You have that inner struggle of, and I, when I say artists, I mean musicians, dancers, you know, mm -hmm. any, anyone, that inner struggle of um, I'm terrible, this is, I'm useless, and the other side going, but I am unique, but I am important. So did it take you a while to learn yeah. to quiet that other voice? Yeah, it did. Um, it, I, started, I started practicing drawing and painting um, when I was seven, pretty seriously. I really, I really was pretty focused on learning it. And um, I used little wins all the time to sort of prove to myself that, see, um, I'm not a failure. I just did that little painting, you know, that, or that little drawing. And so it's really been a series of little wins um, collected together. And, and I think that, um, and my advice to artists is, you know, biting off way more than you can chew is actually your biggest threat, you know, but setting yourself up for a tremendous failure because you're trying to go too big too soon. Uh, it's very important to don't try to paint a painting this big until you've painted many this big, you know? So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I think I'm getting better at believing I'm a genius. The important thing is to believe you're a genius and then carry out the behaviors of what a genius would do. Okay, that's so inspiring. <laughs>